All right, everyone, welcome to our October GSA assembly meeting. I am trying out our virtual option today since I've been running a fever for the last couple of days. That's why you're not seeing me in person. Great option. I love that we have hybrid for this reason. Um, so now everybody online and in person, go ahead and use this QR code on the screen to take attendance. You can also type in the link if you need to, if that QR code is not working for you. And again, as soon as you see that blue banner across the bottom of your screen, your attendance has been recorded. And eboard, if you can remember to do this too, we're the worst ones. We never remember to do it. Okay. All right, does that work for everybody? It's loading for me. I have to go through the whole Microsoft authentication thing. I know, I just had to do that too. I'm still getting used to that every time it surprises me. So this QR code and the link is live for 72 hours afterwards. So as long as you have that link anytime throughout the meeting today, you can go ahead and log in and get your attendance. If you miss that at all, let us know after the meeting and we can come back to this screen. All right, let's keep going then. So here is our agenda for today. Um, so we're just doing the overview. We just took attendance. Um, Nagla is going to give us a welcome message and then we're going to have fall greetings from interim Dean Bell, which if you are shocked by that, you will get more information in a little bit. Um, then we're going to have a presentation from Sean. He's from the Sustainability Council. He'll be talking to us about the Green Fund today. We're gonna to talk about our GSA Halloween bowling event that's coming up. Um, and then we'll also be talking about the funding window, which opens tomorrow morning. Claire is going to give you all the information that you need about the funding for the fall 2021 semester. And then we should have a little bit of extra time today. So we're not really rushed in our agenda. We'll have uh, plenty of time for questions. So don't hold back any questions. So with that, go ahead and take over, Nagla. I appreciate it, Lexi. I wish you feel better soon. How are you? This point of the semester is not easy. Is it easy? Brooks, is it easy? <laughs> <laughs> I love the status point of the health education. I love it. But it is, we are pushing through this semester. I think we feel tired by this point of the semester, but I believe that we will make it to the finish line, definitely. Um, we have two wonderful uh, graduate students attending with us today for the first time, Shanna and Terry. Okay, so I have introduced myself to you. I am Nagwa, the president of the Graduate Student Association. My pleasure for the second year in a row. And I am a PhD student in public health education with Brooks and Love. So today I was thinking, what should I say in my work in a speech? So a lot of updates, good updates. I'm always uh, optimistic about changes. And, uh, and I wanted to have two points to talk with you about. Number one, a thank you point. I wanted really on behalf of graduate students to say thank you to Dr. Uh, Kelly Berg for her wonderful leadership to the graduate school. Um, we enjoyed her, her sincere work with us, her love, her passion, and we will miss her so much. But, but, Christelle, we are excited. Dean, the interim dean of the graduate school now is Dr. Bell. What is it? You know why? Because he is ours. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. He's the advisor for GSA for years. So we have a privilege. We have a privilege here. So Dr. Bell is working with him for two years. I saw his sincere love and support and dedication and, and his mathematical mind supporting graduate students. So we are excited, joy to work with him. We are excited to support him. 
We are excited to bring your talent and your research and all the love and support to you, Dr. Bell. We are here with you. Congratulations, we are in good hands. We are in good hands. And because those hands are very valuable and very, very good, so I give, I give the floor now to you, Dr. Bell. Thank you, Nadia. Yes. Yes. So if I stand here, they can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. I hope you all had some time uh, on Monday and Tuesday to take a real break um, from, from everything. I, I know that uh, spring or uh, fall break, excuse me, often just means a break from uh, the, the classes, but the work continues. So, um, uh, I hope that you took some time and, and just uh, were able to get away and, and relax a little bit, at least um, uh, uh, mentally, uh, from all of the, the, the demands of the semester. As Nagla said, uh, I'm, I'm Greg Bell. I use he, him, his pronouns. I'm a professor of mathematics, uh, and I'm the interim dean of the graduate school. So um, if you haven't seen the, the news, um, Dr. Burke decided to uh, return to faculty. Um, and if you know her, you know that she has a great passion for, for teaching, a great passion for uh, sharing uh, her, her love of, of music and creative activity. Um, so she made that decision, and um, I moved into this role uh, just this week. So um, as Nagla said, it's, it's, uh, these are big shoes to fill. Uh, Dean Burke was, was um, uh, such a strong advocate for graduate students uh, for these past four, four or five years, five years. Um, so I hope to, to do justice to uh, the work that she did. I hope to continue the excellent work um, and in supporting uh, all of you and supporting all of the, the graduate students here at UNCG. Um, so whatever it is that you need, if you feel that you need support, come to us. We want your experience here to be the best possible experience that it can be. Um, the, uh, I, I, you know, when, whenever there's change, it's also an opportunity for improvement. Um, so if there's something that you would like to share with me, I invite you to do that. Um, please reach out to me. If there's something that you see that, that we can do, if you would like um, to, to, to speak to me or, or to, uh, to email me, that's fine. Um, I, I, I welcome that. If you would like to share these sorts of things with me anonymously, there's also a mechanism to do that. Um, if you go to the graduate school webpage, grs.uncg.edu, if you go there, oh, looks like Adrian is going there. I can pull it up right here. Um, oh, well, Lexi, can you pull it up and share it if you'd like? If it's too much trouble, it's not in. It's, Ain't technology wonderful? <laughs> oh, look, it's me. Oh, it's, it's tiny. <laughs> and also a pair. This is so, so weird. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, so if you scroll down, you see Minerva's mailbox right here. Um, so if you click on that, it takes you to a Qualtrics form. It's an anonymous form. It's not collecting any information. Um, and there's just one box. Let us know what's on your mind. If you want to, if you want to a response, if you if you um, leave your your name and email there, you can do that. You don't have to; those are optional, um, and you can share things that are on your mind. Um, so I welcome you to, to to do that. It comes to me. It comes to the graduate school staff. Um, this will only come. The, the responses here only come to me and one other person um, in the graduate school uh, who, who monitors who set this up. Um, so um, just be aware of that. It, it comes straight to me and to this other person. Um, but you know, do share what, what is on your mind if you'd like to. Um, I hope good things are on your mind. Um, the graduate school we love, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're in graduate education because we, we're passionate about graduate education and the positive impact that it can make in uh, our lives. Um, so, um, you know, we want to hear when things are not going well, but we also love hearing when things are going well. If you have an interaction with a faculty member or um, a, a program director, faculty program director, or someone in, in the graduate school office, share that stuff because I think we all need that sort of affirmation and that sort of uh, 
um, uh, that sort of, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, we, we all need that sort of positive energy in our lives now. So if you have a positive interaction with someone, please, please share it. Please share it with them. Please share it with me so that I can share it with them. Um, you know, these, these things are important. I think especially now, um, you know, as we enter the 20th month of this pandemic or something, um, these, these things are, are more important than ever. So um, th those are my fall greetings. I'm happy if you have some questions for me, I'm happy to try to answer those. Um, but otherwise I'll turn it back over to, I think, is it Sean who's next? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Burning complaints. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. You have a good job so far. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Interim Dean Bell. I have to get used to saying that now. Instead of calling you Dr. Bell, we're very lucky to have you. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Sean. Again, he is visiting from the UNCG Sustainability Council, and he's going to be talking to us about the Green Fund. Thank you, Lexi. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay, great. Yeah, I just want to extend my thanks again to Lexi and to Megan D'Amico, who's um, GSA's representative on the Sustainability Council um, for inviting me and uh, for organizing this opportunity for me to speak with y'all. Uh, many thanks to Nagla and Dr. Bell for their support for this opportunity as well. So yeah, um, I am the Sustainability Specialist for the University of uh, UNC Greensboro, University of North Carolina Greensboro. And um, I do a lot of things, but uh, the one I'm really here to talk to you about with my 10 minutes is the Green Fund, which is a grant program that I hope y'all can um, take advantage of. Um, everybody needs more money, uh, particularly for your research. And I think this is a great uh, chance for you to uh, come and find some for yourself. So uh, I'm gonna share my screen here. Is that coming across okay? All right. Um, <clears throat> So the Green Fund, let me, there we go. Um, I'll just talk a little bit about sustainability in, in general like, um, and how we define sustainability on campus. So typically you think about um, people, planet and profit or, or economy, but we also, um, we really think about sustainability as being an, uh, an environmental justice issue, a social equity issue as well. And we really think that um, aesthetics is an important part of sustainability on campus. So uh, we are a uh, no, well known for our arts programs, and we think that the arts are a great way to communicate and to connect with each other, um, and particularly around issues of environmentalism and sustainability. So we we really think of sustainability being an interconnectedness of, of all of those things. One of the programs that I oversee um, is the UNC G Green Fund. It's paid for out of your student activity fees. You won't ever see anything that says the Green Fund on your bill, but um, we get a chunk of your student activity fee. It's probably about two to three dollars per person, depending on, in, on the size of enrollment. We get approximately $58,000 annually to go to the Green Fund. Um, it was created in 2015 by UNC Green student group. They created a petition. They took it to SGA and SGA um, approved the allocation of student activity fees to the Green Fund back then. So it's just been around about six years. I've been at, um, with the university for three. So I, I was not around when the Green Fund um, was created. But um, basically, it's here to invest in campus infrastructure educational opportunities, research opportunities, and professional development opportunities for students. There is a committee, so there are also um, service opportunities for you. I don't know if Will Queen is on this call today, but Will is a GSA representative um, who s serves on the committee, but we have ad hoc um, committee members as well. If, you, if anybody was interested after hearing about this serving next year, please write to me. I'll put my contact information in the um, chat for you later. There are a number of advisors like myself and other faculty and staff members, um, but we have no authority 
over the fund. It's your student activity fee money and it's the student um, committee members who have authority of how the funding gets spent. And the student committee is made up of representatives from student government, so SGA, GSA, and um, we recruit from student clubs who have some sort of environmental interest. So UNC Green, uh, Food Recovery Network, um, Defend Our Future, which is a chapter of the Environmental Defense Fund, uh, the Garden Club, uh, all have members. And then we have some ad hoc members as well, as I mentioned before. Um, over the six years, I'll just give you kind of a brief uh, review of the impact. Um, and I'm happy, Lexi, I'm happy to share this with, with you to forward to people if they want. I know you're recording the, the video, but I'm happy to share the slides with you too. Um, over the lifetime of the Green Fund, we've, you, we, I say you, I should say you, have invested over $340,000 into over 60 projects on campus. Um, some of those are for infrastructure, so anybody can apply for a grant, so that's um, employees or students. Students do have to have an advisor um, who's authorized to, you know, spend university money. Um, we don't just turn fu funding over to you, um, and we don't write you a check, um, but um, happy to work with you on stuff. So we do do infrastructure projects. Um, so we've paid for occupancy sensors and dorms, electric vehicle charging stations, um, the campus wetlands. I don't know if we have any biology or biochem majors uh, here, but um, there's wetlands uh, in Peabody Park. There's one actually in the forest and there's another one in the prairie over by the um, volleyball court that was paid for out of the green fund. And it's a great uh, example of how it's now providing uh, research and develop professional development opportunities for students. So some of you may be conducting pollinator research or study. I know there's bee, um, bat migration research that's happening out there. Um, Dr. Oberly's class, I know does a lot of, um, might be doing some research there with um, bacteria and all kinds of stuff. Um, all told from a facilities related standpoint, you know, we've, you're, you've saved the university um, enough energy to power about 23 homes annually. And that re results in about a $36,000 annual savings and a lot of actual um, water savings. Um, we, we did a project where we implemented um, automatic rain sensors on the um, sprinkler system for the athletic fields and that's saving a ton of, a ton of water. Um, and we funded a, a number of um, different research projects for students. Um, we use it to forward the climate action plan um, really that has anything to do with lowering our carbon footprint and reducing our, um, our waste or, you know, resource energy conservation. So, um, you know, we've had this plan in place since 2013. We do have a goal of becoming carbon neutral and zero waste by 2050. And um, at this point, we've reduced our carbon footprint by 8%. We, I'm conducting a carbon uh, greenhouse gas inventory this semester and am anticipating from the numbers I've been looking at that that'll be reduced basically um, because of the um, pandemic, essentially. We've had fewer people on campus, fewer people driving to campus, travel related to work has gone down, all kinds of stuff has been, has been reduced. So, but um, you know, we, we measure things, we are looking at energy, water, transportation, materials management, we look at how well we're embedding uh, sustainability into academics and community outreach and strategic planning within administration. Um, I mentioned this before, who can apply, you know, students, faculty, and staff. Um, we can allocate funding for up to four years for a project. Um, so, you know, if you have a long-term uh, project that you want to, you know, you can ask for like 10 grand and do, what would that be? I probably picked the wrong number. Let's say eight grand. <laughs> And you can ask for $2,000 a year over four years. Um, applications are due the first of the month. Um, we only accept applications um, during the academic year. So that would be um, September, October, November, and uh, February, March, and April. Um, th I actually need to update this. So we don't um, uh, take applications for projects that are more than $1,000 every month. Um, if you want more than $1,000, these have actually changed to um, October and March 1st. 
Um, we tried to do that just so we don't give away a $35,000 grant in, in February or in like um, in September, and then we don't have uh, funding for the rest of the year. So we try to get all of the big projects together just once a semester. Um, it's not included on these slides, but just to give you guys some perspective, uh, over the lifetime of the Green Fund, the average grant is for about $5,500. So it's a pretty good chunk of change when you look at the average amount of work that we're awarding. We award probably about uh, 11 projects a year on average, and we probably get between 12 to 15 applications on average. So we have a very high acceptance rate as well. Um, Reporting requirements, you do have to submit a final report uh, on your project, and that can entail any kind of number of things depending on the project. Um, and you are not eligible to, to reapply for additional funding until you submit a final report. That's kind of how we um, track the impact of the Green Fund and make sure that people are meeting their obligations. Um, you're absolutely allowed to have funding from additional resources as long as you disclose those. Um, and you do need to provide a, a specific budget, um, you know, if you're going to be buying supplies or talking about uh, an hourly pay rate that you might want to pay yourselves um, and the number of expected hours that you tend to um, uh, spend, you know, uh, on labor. Um, projects must align with the, you know, the definition of sustainability. So we're really looking at this kind of, you know, um, how many of these can you hit? you know, environment, social equity, economics, aesthetics, if you can hit all four, that's a sweet spot. You don't have to hit all four in your project, right? I mean, um, but, um, and then what else? Um, so we're, you know, you guys have all, I'm sure you've written grants at some point in your life, in your uh, professional career so far. Um, you know, you wanna provide a clear outline of, of goals, budget, relevance, um, how you plan to implement, the, the project, um, you know, make sure you're providing a clear understanding of sustainability on campus and how your project is going to afford that mission, um, and then demonstrate how it's going to uh, impact multiple stakeholders on campus, and then you know benefit to students. And then I would say quantity does not equal quality. You know, if we've had projects that have only been um, awarded to one particular student, but it's been a great experience for that student. You don't have to, um, you know, do a great a project that's going to involve 100 people. You can do a project that's, you know, for four or five or just one individual, as I said. Um, we have some funding outcomes. So we do try to um, provide an answer to you within a month. So if you get your application in on the first of the month, we do try to give you an answer by the, um, at the end of the month. So we have a 30-day turnaround. That's better than anything you're going to get from the National Institute of Health or, or the EPA or anything else that you might be applying to for a grant. So we, we do have a quick turnaround. Um, sometimes they may take a little longer because we might have some questions that you might need to answer. Or you might need to come back to us with some additional information. Um, and you can do that with, you know, so we would try to get you within, an answer within another 30 days. Um, sometimes we might have some conditions that we, we want you to meet. Um, and they just, you know, we can talk about those on a case by case basis. Um, and then some, you know, like I said, sometimes we, we might ask you to revise and resubmit, but you haven't thought this through. I doubt anybody here would just submit something haphazardly, but it does happen. Um, but like I said, it's a rare occasion that we just decide not to fund something. Um, that's the end of the presentation, but I do want to just show you, uh, and I'll put the link in the chat here for everyone, the Green Fund website. You can, um, there's a link to submit a proposal. There are some videos, some old videos that were produced by students highlighting previous projects. And then there are um, a list of projects that have been funded over the past academic years. You can see um, who's received the funding and for what and how much they've received. And the other thing is there, um, Guidelines are here. We are particularly looking, this is written by the students, they're looking for projects that are going to promote just sustainability, so that educate, explore advanced topics of, of racial justice and social equity, um, or that pr um, promote and support sustainability education and outreach. 
Now, those are just the funding priorities. They are not funding limitations. We absolutely are accepting um, projects that are outside of those um, criteria. Um, Sean, can yes. I interject? Yeah, absolutely. Man. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for letting me interrupt you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm reaching out to graduate students here because I hope that we can all kind of see that this is a great opportunity to be really creative. And you might be thinking, again, sustainability could be thought in like a very narrow mindset, whereas if you're a biologist, well, of course it makes sense to look at bees. But if you're a music um, degree holder or you're looking into how to incorporate environmental justice into your classrooms, the Green Fund is the place to do this because this is for us to use. And right now, graduate students aren't really tapping into this money, but we're paying for it. So <laughs> my suggestion is to really think out of the box and think of ways that you can combine this justice piece, this racial and equity justice piece with aesthetics. Or if you want to do some sort of project that's boosting grad student interest in sustainability on campus, it's your way to be creative. And if you ever wanna talk more about project design or kind of does this idea fit within the bounds of the Green Fund, Sean and I are always here for that. And I love thinking about ideas. I'm an ideas person have a hard time on the exec execution part, but Sean's there for that reason. So definitely let me or Sean know if you have any questions or ideas that you might wanna to submit to the Green Fund. Yeah, thank you, Megan. Um, yeah, uh, I'm absolutely available anytime um, to provide a consultation for you. I think that applicants actually uh, really benefit from that, um, just having an opportunity to talk with me and, and understand like the perspectives of, of the, um, the, the committee's viewpoints and uh, how, you know, how to ask for the right amount of money that's not gonna you know, blow other projects out of the water and, and, not, you know, and not get you rejected and stuff like that. Um, talking about a social equity project, um, you might have seen this in the news, but um, Adam Carland is a professor in visual arts department and he runs the, down, the downtown um, Greensboro project space. And he worked with a number of other faculty and students in, um, in music, sculpture, visual arts to um, create a, um, a really interactive art project with employees from the industries of the blind, which is just, uh, well, I'm pointing behind me, but it, I don't know where you guys are, but it's on Gate City Boulevard, right um, at Tate and Gate, the intersection of Tate and Gate. And you can walk by it or drive by it and you'll see um, big ar artistic prints that are billboards on the side of the building and they're representative sculptures. So the employees can go and feel the sculptures to understand what the um, visual aspects of the um, picture look like. And then they did interviews with, um, and then the, 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 all the artwork is based on interviews and the experiences of the employees at Industries of the Blind and um, they recorded the interviews and so they can actually play the interview to hear descriptions of the artwork and to hear their kind of input on how they came about um, developing this particular image and, and sculpture. Um, another one, you know, I mentioned Will earlier, um, he and a number of students from economics and computer science have been developing, um, I don't you know, computer models and um, to build an energy dashboard for facilities. Um, and then um, Dr. Uh, Jesus and uh, Nance and Dr. Nance Cavill, I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering those names, um, are doing research with the Carolina, um, North Carolina zoos. Carolina Red Wolf exhibit and they're paying labor for um, a student researcher to help with them. So uh, we pay, you know, we ask to pay a living wage, you know, we support that. We want to make sure that you guys are not just getting, you know, paid, you know, minimum wage for that. We, we want to pay at least 12 to $15 an hour, depending on your field of study. You know, you can ask for more money. We have paid students up to $20 an hour for, for their work that they've done. Um, there is an F, and I, I know I might be over time already, but there is an FAQ available on the website as well that can help answer some of the questions before you have a consultation with me. And I also think that that's a really great um, a resource for you to, to, um, to look over before applying. Yeah, Are there any uh, questions? Yeah, we've got a question here. One, two. 
can hear not me. really, yeah, but okay. if somebody can, if you can come up oh, to the microphone. Oh, coming down. Okay. <laughs> um, so my question, I'm a second year graduate student and I'm really interested in the Green Fund actually. Oh, did I just push some buttons? No, no you're, you're, I think you're I, I pushed some buttons with my knee. Um, yeah, so I, I have this idea and I think it would be maybe more than a thousand dollars. But my question is, so I wouldn't be able to apply until March. Correct. And then I graduate and to execute this project during my thesis within three months. Um, I guess my question is, um, what's the timeline for completing a project if we're on track to graduate within months of that deadline? Uh, ideally, we would like for you to finish it before you graduated. Um, that, that, would, <laughs> that would be a precedent. We haven't had that issue arise yet. So that would be something that the committee would have to consider. And you know, we'd probably take that on a grant by grant basis. I would advise you to okay. talk to me and see, and you know, let's figure something out. So there's potential that someone could work on a project over the summer, it could extend a little bit beyond their time at UNCG. Depend, so, yeah, I think it depends okay, on okay. What, what you want to do. But it would, okay. you know, we haven't had we haven't had to cross that bridge yet. So okay, I'd like to build it. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Anyone in a chat has a question, just go ahead and unmute yourself and ask. Would you ever be interested in funding a project related to disability access? It would, again, yes. I mean, there's a wide range of, of projects that would be fall under sustainability on campus, you know. Um, okay. When I think when I think about you know ADA compliance and transportation on campus, uh, absolutely you know that's um, integral access that kind of accessibility is integral to our transportation system. So um, okay, you know, but that's just the th first idea that comes out of my head. I don't know what you would be thinking, but you know, I don't want to. I would never tell somebody don't apply, right? right. A apply and then you know let us figure out based on what the project is if 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 it falls within our guidelines or not. Okay, thank you. Yeah. The other thing I would say is that if, it, if any of you are involved with clubs, you know, this is a great opportunity for you to um, come to, uh, to get additional funding for your clubs because I know, um, I don't well, I don't know if GSA, I don't know. I mean, I guess if you're a part of a student club, you go through the same process that undergraduates do for, applying for money from SGA. Um, and, uh, and I'm an advisor for a couple clubs. Um, and I, I know that they never give you 100% of the funding that you request. So if you're doing some sort of project, uh, you know, particularly like, a, I, I think of like a community engagement project where you want to have a, a conference or you want to have some sort of tabling session and you want to be zero waste, or you want to promote sustainable transportation, you know, I'm just kind of thinking off the top of my head, you can come to the Green Fund for additional financial support for those types of projects. You know, we've had clubs, um, you know, the Food Recovery Network, I don't know if you guys know what they do, but they take leftovers from um, dining facilities upstairs in Moran Commons, and they donate those to children, um, like schools in, who have, um, uh, students who are food insecure, or they give them to the shelter. They give them the shelters, and they're saving like hundreds of pounds of food a month from going to the landfill. And they've come to the Green Fund for um, to-go containers, you know, for them to transport the food. Um, trying to think of other, you know, the Garden Club I think has maybe used um, funding to buy garden supplies. We built a garden, um, a community garden, out at Piney Lake that students are using as well out there, and that money goes to, um, or not the money, the food, some of the food goes to the Spartan Open Pantry. So there are actually a lot of different types of benefits and how the Green Fund trickles down to reach the students, so. Um, awesome. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing, Sean. And yeah, if you wouldn't mind putting in your contact information yep. in the chat, we can get that out and share that with everybody as well. Also, just so you all know, the Green Fund is very easy to Google. If you just type in UNCG Green Fund, it's the first link and you can find Sean's contact information on there as well. So thank you so much again for coming and presenting that great information. We love having y'all back every year.
Thanks, Lexi. I'm going to jump off the call. Y'all have a good night. Good luck with everything. Bye. All right. So now we're jumping into another exciting topic. Um, we recently got approval to host a Halloween bowling event. Um, so that is going to be on Saturday, October 30th from 8 to 11 p.m. at Spare Time. And that is the Spare Time in Greensboro. This is a picture of the event that we hosted at Spare Time two years ago in 2019. Um, these were all of our costume contest participants. If you remember being there, it was a grand night. We had a really good time and we're looking forward to have a, just a great um, time coming up here as well. Um, so there are a couple stipulations that come with this event, of course, um, because it is in COVID time still. Um, we are going to have to require pre-registration. And what, what that means is we're going to make a Spartan Connect event. We're going to send this out in an email. And you should really be watching for this email because if you want to come to this event, it's limited to 100 graduate students. Um, and that was just the way that we could get it approved. So we're just happy that we can have the event. Um, so watch for that link. Make sure you pre-register if you want to come. Please do not register if you don't know if you can make it. I would hate for people to register and then not be able to come and somebody else miss out on that opportunity. Your Spartan ID is going to be required for entry. Um, so when you get there, we're going to be in the VIP room. Um, so you're going to walk into spare time. You're going to go to the left and the VIP room will be over there. You'll have to get your Spartan ID out. We'll swipe you um, and make sure we have contact tracing um, for that as well. So there's going to be a costume contest. So start to get your ideas rolling. Um, this does not have to be an expensive costume. In 2019, we had an option for most creative costume. That was like the homemade costumes. Um, my programming committee hasn't quite worked out those details yet, but just know there's going to be prizes for the top three people. Um, those three will be from different categories. Um, so come dressed up. Um, we're going to be dressed up. It's going to be a great time and we're going to be giving giving away prizes. There's going to be free bowling. There's nine lanes inside the VIP room that we can be bowling all night long. Um, there's going to be free food and a free non-alcoholic drinks. There's a bar in the VIP room that will be a cash bar. So if you're interested in purchasing your own alcoholic drinks, you can, of course, bring your ID to prove your age. Um, and there will be discounts offered for arcade games and laser tag. So if you haven't been to spare time, it's a huge building. There's a lot going on. Um, we'll just be doing the bowling part for that night. Um, but if you're interested in leaving the VIP room to go play arcade games or um, go to play laser tag, you are very welcome to do that. So the email with that sign up for those 100 graduate students will be coming out soon with more details. And before then, if you have any questions for me, go ahead and email me. My email is at the bottom of the screen there, gsabppgm at uncg.edu. Um, please let me know if you have any questions or concerns about the event before that. Let me double check the chat here. All right, does anybody have any questions about this for me? before we go on. So that email will list all of the information that you need to know before coming. But Alex, did you have something? No, I was saying there are no questions here. <laughs> all right, well, I hope to see you all dressed up and having a great bowling time in a couple of weeks. And with that, I will turn it over to Claire, the main point of our meeting. Yeah. All right, hi, everyone. Um, yeah. Yes, like it says, my name is Claire Newman. Um, I am the GA, GSA treasurer and our funding window is a little different than, or our window's not different, but our funding's a little different than I reported back in September. So this is a whole new year. Um, so make sure to report back. The application window opens tomorrow at 6 a.m. and closes October 29th at 11.59 p.m. I will say that I actually would report to your graduate students to try to get your application in, one, as soon as possible because it's first come, first serve. But two, if they try to do it at 1130 on October 29th and run into problems, you know, tech four is not open at that time. OK, so I would emphasize to you to really strongly encourage your graduate students to get their applications in. One, as soon as possible, but also do not wait 
till after tech, not tech four, sorry, tech six. Six tech. We know what you meant. Yeah, okay, six tech. I actually called them today, so that's really bad. Six tech is closed, okay? So just really emphasize that. I think they close at 8 p.m. on Fridays, maybe even less than that. So I would just really encourage your students to get them in. So we have two possible funds to apply for, but there are three applications, all right? So we are doing a research capstone fund. That is the RCF. You can be awarded up to $300, okay? We are doing a professional development fund. That is for both in-person conferences and virtual conferences, okay? So we are doing travel. With that being said, they are two separate applications. So if your graduate students want to apply for a virtual conference, they will find a PDF that's labeled PDF virtual. It's in, it's in capital letters, okay? If they are funding for something that is in person or for travel in any way, it is a PDF in person, okay? There are two separate applications. It's the same thing. It's gonna be $200. We are awarding the first 400 students. Once again, this is by money. 40 students, sorry, 40 students. Man, 40 students. But once again, this is by money, not by people. So. For example, if not everyone uses all $200, we can fund more students. Does that make sense? All right, so now we digress. Lexi. Okay, so once again, there are three separate applications. The first application is the Professional Development Fund Virtual Conferences. The reason these are separate applications is because they have completely different requirements. All right, so if you are going to do a virtual conference, what you will need is you need a letter of support from your faculty advisor, just saying this conference benefits you in some way. You do not have to be presenting, but you know, however this benefits you. Two, a student reimbursement form. This is found on the GSA website. It's also an attachment on the application. Okay, so there's two ways to find this form. When you open the application, it's attached. If you go onto the GSA website, there's a funding forms uh, tab. It's on that tab, okay? So you fill that out. You need a receipt of the conference. It needs to be an itemized receipt, okay? So you can't say, you know, here's the receipt, I paid $100 for it, right? When we need to know what you paid $100 for, okay? So most receipts will say, Conference registration, $100. And then down below it says you paid $100 or whatever, right? Okay, so make sure it's itemized. You need proof of attendance. So proof of attendance is gonna be maybe conference at a glance, you know how they send you those emails after you apply. Maybe it says the schedule, anything that really proves to us that you attended the conference, all right? Because we don't wanna reimburse you for something you didn't actually attend. Okay, so proof of attendance. And then international students only. I apologize because this is a little harder for international students. You need to have a form that's the NRA 01, 02, or I551 form, okay? That's only for international students. Only applica applications from represented departments will be accepted. So in order to find that out, one, we have a list of senators on our GSA website. You need to make sure your department is represented. That is something in our bylaws. We only fund departments that have people come and attend GSA, okay? And if you're here or listening to this, more than likely you have a Senator because hopefully you are the Senator or you are someone, right? But just saying, okay? All right, so the next one looks very similar, slightly different. Professional Development Fund in-person conference, okay? So a completely separate application. The in-person conference has different requirements. So instead of making one application that got very complicated, I tried to do it, it made it very complicated. We did two separate applications because they require different things. The TRV1 form is something you will need. I cannot stress this enough. I made a video of me going through each separate application on how to do it. 
watch the video on how to fill out the TRB one form. Okay, or really emphasize to your graduate students, watch the video. We have a sample form up on the website. We have the blank form up on the website, once again, under funding forms, but it is not as intuitive as you think it is. Does that make sense? So I think that some graduate students, if they just rush and go do it, they're not going to fill it out correctly. And if they don't fill it out correctly, then they're not going to get funded. Okay, so really stress, watch the video. I will say on that TRV1 form, the biggest thing that you need to make sure that graduate students select is that you are going for a business reason, okay? You are attending this conference for a business reason. So one, that business reason could be you're presenting. That is much more easy to justify, but if you are not presenting and you're still attending the conference, make sure that you say, I'm going for a business reason. This is once again, written in our bylaws, little things that they won't fund if you don't say, okay? Two, I need a PDF of an email from a, your advisor, your supervisor, your department head that says they have pre-approved your travel and you have a business purpose of attendance, okay? The reason that is, is because we're trying to cover our tracks. So there's certain ways you have to date forms and just in case you date your form wrong, which might happen and that's okay, we wanna make sure that we can cover your tracks by attaching this email. So we're really trying to emphasize helping you out to get funded. So just make sure to attach these things because that will increase your probability of getting funded. Number three, you need a letter of support from your faculty advisor. If you are not presenting, even if you are presenting, have your faculty advisor explicitly state what the business purpose you have for attendance. Do you guys get a theme here? Yeah, <laughs> all right. Business purpose, okay? So really emphasize to your faculty advisor, hey, can you write in, for example, if it's me, Claire Newman is going to this conference because she is representing UNCG on a business trip, like this is a business uh, thing to help increase her academic career, okay? Something like that, okay, business purpose. You need an itemized receipt of conference costs. These conference costs can be travel, they can be food, as long as the conference does not provide food. They can be hotel expenses. It can be registration, all right? If you have not attended the conference yet, this is where this whole thing gets very confusing, okay? If you have not yet attended the conference, I want you to one, try to predict, don't attach anything, but like maybe write in, I have not attended the conference, but conference registration is this much, our hotel is this much, whatever. Once again, we can only fund up to $200, but any type of prediction will help. And then after you submit the application, I'm gonna come back to you. This is only for in-person travel. I'm gonna come back to you and say, you have been tentatively accepted to have your fund travel or your travel funded, okay? I need your department finance person, okay, you all have one, their email. Because what's gonna happen is you are gonna then send your receipts after your conference. So after you've attended your conference, you're actually gonna send your receipts to them, not to me. <laughs> See how this gets really complicated? It gets a little complicated. I am open for emails. I'll be able to direct you the whole way, okay? But if you have not attended the conference, you probably can't submit itemized receipts. Just try to predict some things okay, of why you need this money. Does that make sense? Five, once again, proof of conference. So we need schedule at a glance. We need thank you for attending emails. We need any type of something that you can prove I attended this conference. And then presentation abstract. So if you are not presenting, just write in, I'm not presenting, but this conference is benefiting me in this way. Okay, does that make sense? And then once again, if you are not a US citizen, attach the necessary documentation. That is a lot of things that I just said. I made a video on the GSA website. It's labeled PDF in-person conference. If you watch that video, it should hopefully explain everything you need, how to do it, what it looks like, okay? And once again, I'm available by email. You can email the GSA treasurer um, account. I respond. I feel like I'm pretty good at responding. Give me some grace. I'm very tired. <laughs> okay.
All right, the next one is info ready, okay? So there's one more application after this, but I just wanted to show you what info ready looks like. Do you see how all 2021 GSA funding opportunities, in-person travel, same exact thing, virtual funding. Do you see how those are different? I feel like they're very clearly different, okay? Make sure that you submit the correct application, okay? That needs to be the correct application because if you do it, if you do the other application, you're gonna submit all these wrong things and then we can't find it, okay? They're two separate entities. And then we have the RCF, which has been there, okay? So applications. Um, so they're separate applications, they're different requirements. And once again, videos are available on each application. I did it based off of application this time. So if you go to the video and you watch, it'll see exactly what you need. If you're gonna do in-person, exactly what you need. If you're gonna do virtual, exactly what you need. If you're gonna do RCF, okay. Hey, Claire, can we ask a quick question? Yes. In the chat, um, Heather asked at this point, have all graduate students received an email with their link login to InfoReady? It's just the UNCG login, correct? Yes, it should just be your UNCG login. Um, so it's your UNCG credentials. Thank you. I actually probably didn't go. I think I said that in the videos, but I didn't actually log in because I was already logged on. So that's a great question. And then you can go to the next one, Lexi. Okay. And then the final one is the Research Capstone Fund. This is exactly what I presented on in September. We're going to give you up to $300 to spend on whatever you need to complete your research. Once again, I want to emphasize your research because this is for you, not for your advisors. Okay, um, some departments will pick up additional funding. Okay, so you should look into that maybe for your department. I know that I feel like biology at one point, we pay for part of like a, micro, a microscope, right? But microscopes are like way more expensive than $300. So we just paid the $300, okay? Um, the biggest thing is we are only gonna give you 300, okay? So don't request more than 300 because then we can't help you. Does that make sense? Um, Students can go in together to get more funding. So I've had a question about this. You only need to submit one application, okay? In that application, it'll ask for your information. You can fill it in for one person, only one student, but make sure somewhere in that application, you write the names of both students. And the more information you can give me on the second, second student, the better. Does that make sense? So only one application, but if you have two students, you can say, both students are requesting this. We would like $600 or $500 or whatever amount. Does that make sense? This is a reimbursement. This is not a reimbursement. Let's just say this is not a reimbursement. No, this is. This is not a reimbursement, only a purchase request sent to your department. So what that means is we will eventually reimburse your department. So it is a reimbursement technically, but... Don't pay for it and then come back and say, hey, I need to be reimbursed for this. Does that make sense? We will have your department buy whatever you are asking, okay? Your department will do that and then we reimburse your department. So you personally are not involved in any of the paying or the reimbursement. Does that make sense? It's not an individual, it's a department thing. With that being said, once again, I'll be contacting and communicating with your department. If you would go ahead and find out who is responsible for the finances in your department, that would really help me. Because when I come back and say, hi, I've accepted your application. Can you please let me know who your department finance person is? I need a response back and that'll make the transition smoother, okay? Um, this item will belong to your lab department, not you. All right. So it'll belong to UNCG. You need to justify why UNCG needs this. So it can't be something that is yours. So you can't ask for, you know, payment to you or to your recipients, participants. That's what I want. Sorry, participants. Um, you can't ask for furniture. You can't ask for um, gift cards. I attached on the next form, if you go to next, Lexi, here we go. This is a, if you go to this website, you'll be able to see exactly what is allowed 
to be purchased and what is not allowed to be purchased. I also attached it on our application, but not allowed for RCF. Don't ask for furniture. Do not ask for cash or cash advances. Do not ask for subject or participant payments, dissertation bindings, and don't request anything over $300. <laughs> Even if it's more than $300 and your department's gonna pick up the tab of the rest, or you're gonna pick up the tab, only request $300 and then you can work that out with your department. Does that make sense? And then I think we're good, Lexi. Maybe comments, questions, concerns. Yeah, perfect. I know that was a lot. <laughs> All right. Claire, I want to iterate, reiterate one thing that we said in the chat. Um, Allison asked, it, she searched on InfoReady and couldn't find any of the funds. And that is just because the funding window is not open yet. So if you yes. search for it on InfoReady tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., it will be there. But if you search for it any time before that, you're not going to see it. That is correct. I will also double check that this afternoon to make sure, because um, one of the applications I made myself, so that's a little nerve wracking, but I think we're good. <laughs> um, if you want to open the website too, just screen share your website, Lexi. And I promise I'll be done in two minutes. Okay, here we go. So funding, once again, in-person PDF, that's me, that's really awkward, but video and in-person PDF, how to do it. Virtual conference PDF, how to do it. Virtual con, no, RCF application, how to do it, okay? And then if you go, and that's info ready explained, which that's an old video, but you're welcome to watch it, okay? Um, this tells you exactly what you need for both. That's kind of what I went over today. And then once again, all these things are linked so you can find the forms before you open the application. And there is an example of the TRV1 form. Okay. How do we feel? Hectic, manic, all like me? Yes, I believe this is going to be posted online, right? Yeah, I can also put it in the minutes. It'll be put in the minutes, is the response. Um, but that TRV1 form, if you look at, I made a sample of it, it's in the funding forms tab. So don't click that one. Yeah, you'd go in the funding forms tab, it's right there. And then if you look here, this one is a sample. Our very own Corey Potts was amazing. If you don't know her, she's really wonderful. She made this example for you to show you exactly what you need to write, okay? So she writes her name, she writes her address, and then she says, make sure to click this box and put this date and these types of things, okay? But the TRV one form, you just have to fill up the top. You need to scroll all the way down to the bottom and write your signature. Corey's amazing, I agree. <laughs> All right, but when you do that TRV1 form, it's kind of complicated. You just skip the whole middle section. So you fill out the top section, you fill out your signature on the bottom, skip the middle, because the middle is for the people that are actually submitting the reimbursement, and that is not you. Okay. Thank you, Claire. To address a couple of the things in chat, um, one person did say they did find the in-person form on the info ready. So yeah, if you just want to check into that, Claire. And then the PowerPoint deck, we don't normally share that with you all, but the recording of this will be uploaded to YouTube tonight. Um, so we can wait to send out the minutes to you all until we have that YouTube link, and then that will be really easy for you all to share. But really, you're not going to find more information here than you will in Claire's videos that are already on our website. So don't wait for that. Go ahead and send out the funding link that I posted in chat um, to all of your departments. And really, really, senators, it is your job to share this information. OK, so share the information about the Halloween event when that's sent out. Share the information about funding. Answer all the questions that you can. And then any other questions should go to Claire. So imagine how many emails she's getting. Try to try to mitigate that a little bit for her. Thanks, Lexi. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Any other questions? Online people or in-person people? Yeah. If you could just clarify, this deadline is just for the fall. There will be another. Yes. Yes. This is just for fall. Um, for the spring, we are going to have a different funding window. Okay. So if you're to apply for a conference that happens in 2022, but that's February or something. Yes, I would recommend if you are if you are applying for a conference that's happening in 2022, wait. Wait and hold off and do the application 
in our funding window in the spring. Do you know the date? I do not at the moment, it would be but the it would either be before or after. Honestly, if you do it after, it makes our lives easier um, because you can actually turn in itemized receipts and then you'll be funded back quicker. The way we're doing it right now is if you've already gone to a conference, you make life much easier on finance people. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Getting a drink. I think that's good. Lexi, do you have anything else to say? We're good. I just posted the YouTube <laughs> link in the chat, but for online people, go.unc or in person people. Sorry, I'm losing my mind. Uh, go.uncg.e edu slash gsa youtube and you can find that on our website all of these links are on our websites if you have our website you have everything um, make sure you share that out with people and yeah so we have oh we are at five o'clock oh that worked out perfectly okay um so the e-board will be staying there in person um and i'll be staying here online for a little bit so if anybody has any other questions please stay and we can answer those now um yes. for upcoming events we have yes. come talk with GSA on October 28th from four to five. And I think we already have all three presentations filled for that day. And then just remember the Halloween bowling event is gonna be Saturday the 30th and our next assembly meeting will be November 11th. So thank you all for coming to our October assembly meeting. Have a great day. Thank you guys. Give us an act in the wine order. I didn't know that they could do what I need. Okay. All right. I didn't know that they could do what I need. Did we stop recording? Yeah. And they may. I saw Rose. Rose Ewan.